Hey everybody, welcome to the JDC West 2016 tax case presentation. Thank you to our judges, Kristen Haig from Potash Court, Ashley Lund from Golden Healthcare Management, Irina Kovarenko from the University of Regina, Dave Nielsen from Collins Barrow PQ LLP, and Jill Johnson from Capico. Competitors will have a maximum of 20 minutes to present. Immediately following the presentation, Judges will have a total of five minutes to ask the presenters questions. The volunteer timekeeper will show time cards at various intervals to indicate the remaining time and will stop any speaker who goes over that maximum time limit. No questions, comments, cell phones, or picture taking will be permitted from the audience at any time. The audience will only be permitted to applaud following the question and answer period. The audience is banned from any material that bears the name or symbol of a competing university. We ask that the audience exit the room immediately following the question and answer period. Competitors, you may begin when you are ready. Good morning, Ms. Needham. Thank you so much for having us out this morning. My name is Kelsey, and these are my colleagues, Nat and Alice. And we are super excited to be here today to present our recommendation for some of the questions and concerns you brought to us. Just a brief overview of how uh, the presentation is going to go today. I'm going to start with a, just an overall high-level introduction. Uh, talk about the uh, qualitative uh, part of the first issue versus uh, expanding versus uh, selling CAD energy. But that will then continue on with the, the numbers behind the expand versus sale, as well as the sale and full time and the benefits and kind of changes uh, to your lifestyle of the full time becoming a full time employee. Alice will then carry on with some other considerations uh, as well as some risk mitigations and then to provide just an overall conclusion. So how to effectively structure career path while planning for the future. You know, you're kind of at a fork in the road right now. You're looking to expand, whether to expand CAN Energy or to potentially go to ECAN uh, and become an employee there and within a couple years become uh, on, be on the partner track. And you want to be able to also one day retire and be able to live comfortably, uh, benefit from all the hard work you've been putting in over the years. So the first issue uh, was expanding or selling. We are going to recommend that you sell Ken Energy Corp. And this, this will maximize the earning potential for yourself. Uh, with the sale of Ken Energy Corp, uh, the goal would be to sell the business with the great, with, for the greatest benefit of both parties. And we are going to recommend selling the shares of the company to your employees, as you have, like two, you have two business managers currently. Full-time employment implications. We definitely want to minimize your tax payable and breaking it down versus salaries with dividends and other uh, considerations such as that uh, will help you receive the most amount in the take, <laughs> the most amount of after-tax retention. And just some other, other considerations, planning for retirement, uh, different investment vehicles, RRSPs, we see you already have some of those, so that's great. And just another couple of ways to make your money go as far as humanly possible. So just some pros and cons of expanding. You will still main, maintain control of the company as you are 100% owner currently. And at, you are a Canadian-controlled private corporation, so you will be able to utilize the small business deduction, which does benefit you a lot when it comes down to tax payables. The downside is it does require a large upfront cost, so approximately a quarter million dollars. Then it's, uh, it's a large, large investment, uh, which you would have to increase the amount of debt you have uh, currently, and it would go back onto yourself. As well as, as you mentioned, entering the market, you will not necessarily have a return on investment right away. You have to be there and you have to build up the relationships and you have to make that connection with the employee, or sorry, with the new clients before you're able to see the benefits of that. As well, you're already working 70 hours a week, so that's just going to increase. Uh, and I know you mentioned as though it's very fulfilling. It is not sustainable. For selling, you will have a 
higher after-tax retention for you personally. Uh, you will see benefits and bonuses which uh, through the company. Uh, you will have reduced working hours, but you will have that increased job security. It won't be just on you to ensure that you're maintaining the client and keeping the clients and bringing in that work. It'll be a, more of a group effort. Uh, the downside is you will have to relocate to Toronto. So currently it's from Western Canada to Eastern Canada, kind of a big move. Uh, you will no longer have the full control of the company, but uh, that as you increase or as you spend more time and you become partner, then you would uh, start to gain that, some of that control back. As well as there is a two year transition period if you do decide to sell Can Energy, which is what we're recommending, as uh, you are worried that some of the clients may leave because the people are the assets, so they might want to follow the people. And now I'm going to pass it off to Manad, who's going to break down some of the numbers for you. Thank you, Kelsey. So today we're going to present the numbers of both sides for you. So if you were to stay at Can Energy Corp, or if you were to move and, and eventually try and become a partner at ECAN Inc. So your salary will be greatly higher at ECAN, and you will also receive bonuses. How, and However, the tax payable, as you can see at the bottom there, looking at the federal and provincial numbers combined, will be approximately $100,000 greater. However, with the amount, of, uh, the amount of increase that you'll be making, the, the after-tax retention of your compensation will still be over $100,000 greater with the move. So that is the reasoning behind why we recommend this. Also, you are looking into the expansion. We just wanted to show you the pre and post expansion numbers and why we chose that this was not why we thought that this was not the route that we believe that you should take. So if you look at your net income number, we approximated that if you do expand, you said it is approximately in a couple of years you will have three times the income. Approximating we approximated your net income number by just multiplying the current income um, and estimating it'd be around fifteen grand in the future. However, as Kelsey did mention that there are great expansion costs of approximately two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So this will greatly put you in debt, and as you can see, this is clearly not the option that we believe you should take. So our overall recommendation is to sell Kent Energy Corp and move um, to ECAN. Um, your higher after-tax retention will result in increased personal prosperity for yourself, and we believe that this will be great. And your overall work-life balance. This is a big part, as you mentioned, you're not enjoying working the 65 to 75 hours per week, so we believe that Moving will help you uh, do this, achieve this. The second issue you brought to us, so just going off of our sale of the Can Energy Corp, how you will do this and what the best option and way of going about this would be. So you have two options, either to sell the shares or to sell the assets. Just looking at the pros and cons of both sides. First of all, looking at the sale of shares. If once you do this, you'll be left with no liability, and we believe that this is a great advantage to you. Um, yes, you may have to lower the price, selling price, just because the seller will be stuck with the liabilities. However, we believe that this will be a huge burden off your chest, and um, the pro is way greater than the con. As well as you will be ability, you will have the ability to utilize your lifetime capital gains exemption. As far as we know, you didn't mention that you have utilized any of it so far, so we assume that you still have the full eight hundred thirteen thousand six hundred dollars left. So if you, we, we can look into this further, but assuming that you do have this full amount left, you can definitely use this. Just looking at the sale of assets, it would be the opposite. So you would, be, you would have the liabilities remaining and you would have a shell company with these liabilities and as well you would not have the ability to use lifetime capital gains exemption because it's only valid per shares. Um, and then also, but you will get a higher selling price. However, as mentioned, we believe that the liability is a huge aspect and believe that you should overall sell the shares. So just looking at two other options for who you should sell the shares of the company to. The first option is a third party as you mentioned, however we do have another option of selling it to your employees as they are investment members in your company, especially your two managers. Um, so the, the first looking at just the third party, there is a higher chance of losing a new contract. You're not too sure of whether this will happen. It's a, a huge unknown and um, it is a pretty big, big risk to take on. Um, so also you will have a two year transition period. 
we don't know how ECAN feels about this at the point at this point and having that two-year transition period if you'll be allowed to sign a contract that will allow you to be with Can Energy for two years. We're not too sure of how that would work, so we believe that a transition period in the other option would be an option two would be a lot faster because the employees are well adapted and they already know the company. Um, and just looking at option two a little bit more, the employees will be able to maintain a connection between the company and the clients. They already have this experience, so maintaining this connection will be a huge advantage and they can keep the company running with all the experience they currently have. And they also have an invested interest, as I mentioned earlier, and that transition will be a lot more efficient and probably will not take the full two years. So just looking at the numbers, this is an estimate as we were not too sure of how much you purchased Can Energy for in originally. So let's say you do get the fair market value of $900,000 and paid approximately $100,000. As I mentioned, this is an estimate. Once you give us the numbers, we can play around with it. But just to show you what your gain will look like. Uh, so if it is $100,000, you will take 50% of that taxable capital gain of $400,000. And as I mentioned, assuming that you haven't used any of the approximately $800,000 li limit you have for your lifetime capital gains, you can use the full amount and have a tax payable of $0. Just a high level review of our recommendations. So we do believe that you should sell the shares of CAD Energy Corporation to your two management manage employees in management. This will allow you to transfer all your liabilities and not be left with a shell company. We do recommend that you set a repayment plan for three to five years to reduce the burden on your employees. We believe that this is a huge investment and your employees will not be able to afford it right away most likely. So putting this into consideration, we think you should consider a repayment plan. This allows them to have a longer time frame to pay it off with and uh, will be more realistic option for them. And as well as utilizing your lifetime capital gains. The third issue you brought to us was what will your implications be if you do become a full-time employee and how will you go about this? So first of all, we believe that you mentioned kind of sales, salary versus dividends. We believe that you should request having a share payment with your, in your contract at the new firm. This way you could pay yourself dividends. So I'll, as you can see in a calculation in a, in a minute here, if you do take your salary at approximately 135 thousand dollars. This is to take your maximum RSP contribution. So if you the RSP contribution is about 18%, if you take the maximum amount, pay the rest out as dividends, and this way you'll result in a lower tax payable. And this is shown in this calculation right here. So the top half is a corporate tax payable, and the bottom half will be your personal tax payable. So if you look at the salary versus dividend to the corporation, the funds available for distribution that you will personally get is higher with salaries. However, when you look at the taxes, the dividends do allow you, so if you look at the personal tax payable, the compensation is 100 versus 72. These are, again, estimated numbers just to show you what the structure would look like and not using exact numbers. The dividend will have a gross up of 38%, so that will bring you up to approximately $100,000. And then the tax payable is approximately the same. However, with the dividend, you do get that dividend tax credit, which will reduce your tax payable by approximately $15,000 resulting with dividends, it'll result in $74,000. So this was is, is less than the 60,000, or it's at a higher after tax retention than the $60,000. Another thing you brought to us, yeah, you're moving across the country from Western Canada to Eastern Canada, discussing home relocation, what kind of support you can get for this relocation as you were worried about the condo cost in Toronto being approximately double the amount of what you're paying right now. So companies allow, usually allow employment, uh, you're eligible for a moving allowance for up to $10,000. We'll have to discuss this further with the new company you're moving to, but however, this is an option to you. And then for the rest of the payments, we believe that you should request an employee loan, as you mentioned earlier. And a big part of this employee loan is to ensure that it has a repayment purchase plan and a prescribed rate of approximately 1%. This way, if let's say you were to get an interest-free loan, you would if you would be have to be taxed at the highest rate, and this is something that we do not we want you to be stuck with, as the interest-free loan technically doesn't exist. It should always have a contract and a prescribed rate of approximately one percent, and then as well as the car loan allows. Currently, you have a BMW. It would be considered a luxury vehicle and would not be eligible for any 
sort of cal car allowance, so we believe that you should try and request a company car or get a, a non-luxury car for the, the purposes of business. And now I'm going to pass it off to Alice, who will discuss some of the other considerations. Thank you, Matt. <clears throat> So when you were, we were talking with you, you did bring up some issues with retirement. You want to live comfortably after retiring. And what we recommend is for your uh, retirement, have a combination of investment for yourself as a continuing revenue once you do retire from econ. Uh, so as of right now, you do have RSP um, contribution. You contribute almost 200000 to it. And we recommend you continue that contribution every year to the maximum of $24,000. And additionally, with uh, being a full-time employee at Econ, they are offering you a great pension plan. So definitely take that into consideration for your retirement plan as that will be part of your future income. Um, additionally, this is something we recommend, but however, you would probably need to talk with Econ furthermore to uh, decide if it could be possibly included in your contract, employment contract, is that when you do retire, from econ later on, uh, exchange your common shares to non-voting preferred shares. That way you will still receive dividends from the company and which will once again increase um, the revenue you will receive when you do retire. Additionally, we, uh, while going through the information you've provided, we realize that you currently do not have a tax-free savings account. And this is a great investment vehicle that we believe you should take advantage of. So as of right now, in 2015, there is a contribution room of $41,000 available to you to contribute. And the TFSA is similar to an RSP where you can um, invest the money wherever you want, either to mutual fund, GIC, <coughs> or any other investment that you're interested in. However, the great thing about tax-free savings account is that when you do withdraw these money they are on a tax-free basis so which is a great advantage to you and additionally uh, by having a TFSA it increases your savings account um, while going through your financials we realize that you currently have a very low savings account and um, as a safety measure precaution you want to make sure you have enough money uh, to cover anything if uh, issues were to occur so by having a TFSA uh, where you can withdraw the money immediately uh, it will be a great way for you to save up your money. So just going over some risk and mitigations uh, with, uh, based on our presentation. So first off, with the sale of Ken Energy Corporation, we recommend you hire a certified business valuator. Uh, hiring a CBV will evaluate your business on a more accurate level than what we prepare today. And also we recommend hiring a lawyer so that the transition of the sale process to your employee can be uh, as smooth as possible, especially if we're recommending with a repayment plan of three to five years. So you definitely want to make sure that in the contract you clarify uh, the repayment plan and how it's going to work out and the interest rate. Um, Another risk was the sale of Con Energy. Can Energy is that it might be difficult to sell the um, company. As of right now, there are no offers uh, for the company, so you might have some troubles finding um, third parties who are interested or even selling them to employees. However, based on our recommendation with the repayment plan, we believe that uh, your employee it decreases the burden that your employee will receive. So they should be able to purchase the company, um, especially with a repayment plan. And since they are very invested in the company, they would want to see the company to grow and prosper as uh, they continue on. And just a third risk, uh, with a new liberal government coming in, there will be some changes to tax rate for yourself and for other limits. So first off, your personal tax rate, uh, the federal tax will be increased, especially if you will, if you are uh, becoming a full-time employee at ECAN where you're earning around $300,000 um, a year, your tax rate is increased almost by 3%, so you want to take that into consideration. Also, your TFSA limit will be changed in the coming year. Uh, it will decrease from $10,000 to $5,000 next year, so that's something you have to be aware of. So just to go over our uh, recommendations again, um, you were asking us to expand Can Energy or actually sell it and become a full-time employee with ECAN. And we definitely recommend that you become a full employee as we believe it is the most uh, it has the greatest earning potential for yourself and it creates a great work-life balance for you as you have been working overtime all the time in the past. <coughs> and as was the sale of 
Pet Energy, we recommend that you sell it to your employees as that will uh, maintain the connection you have with the company and also the connection between the employee and the client. So that's a great way uh, for the company to grow as well. And uh, with full-time employee implications, we uh, re suggest this, uh, a couple of recommendations to include in your contract, which is um, home relocation, sh uh, getting shares as part of your compensation. And other considerations is just to utilize all the available investment vehicles to you, as that way you will receive the greatest benefit for the money you make. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you for listening, and I'll open the floor to questions. Thank you all. This concludes the presentation. Question that's period will now begin. I guess <clears throat> I, I appreciate the presentation. Um, my question is mostly around um, the employee implications, and I'm not sure that I understood um, the dividend versus salary for being an employee. It's my understanding I'm buying into a partnership. So I'm not sure. Are you telling me that I should get partnership? I don't know how I get a dividend from a partnership. Yeah, I can take that. Uh, currently, you would, uh, if you do go, choose to go to ECAN, you would not be going into a partnership right away. You would be working your way up to it, so you would be an employee. Okay. Uh, and working with your employee contract and with the company, you would buy, you would invest in the company, have, have those shares, in which you, then you would be able to receive dividends out of that. So the partnership would give me shares? No, the, the partnership will give you shares in the future, but uh, you will be able to purchase uh, company shares as an employee. I maybe don't have security over how much I'm making because it depends on how much I work. But no one's going to fire me except for myself. And so when I'm part of the partnership, I don't have as so much job security and then I'm not even a partner yet. So if there's downturn in the economy and I'm the newest person, most likely I'm going to be one of the goals. Is there something around that that you could give me more comfort over? Um, well, we believe that if you were a part of a partnership, because when you don't have your own business, yeah, if, if there's an economic downturn, we believe that that would affect you the same way. Yeah, you wouldn't fire yourself, but since your company is, like, we're assuming that it's a lot smaller than a big partnership, this way that, in a chance that something like that happens, it, there's a higher chance that your company will possibly, like, not be able to survive it, whereas, like, a partnership would. Uh, but also the fact that you share your work with a bunch of other partners, um, we also wanted to focus on the work-life balance as well as the job security. They were kind of something that we put together. So that work-life balance is also a huge aspect that you brought to us. So. Where do you, um, how did you do your projection on the uh, amount of money I would make if I won those two contracts? Um, did you assume that, that, uh, that uh, the profit would go from 5,000 a year to, to what was that again? It was, uh, sorry, the font is a little bit small like on, on, the, uh, on, the, on the numbers on the, on the slide. And I, I, I just missed that. Maybe, maybe it's fine. It would work. Uh, but, but the expansion, you said the profit would go from 5,000 to 15,000, like three times? Yes. So this was based on your projection of the value of the company yeah. once it does receive a two contract, which will increase to 900000 which, as you stated, was three times your EBITDA. So we took that three times and just applied that against your uh, net income. Yeah, so, yeah, what I was trying to figure out was if the EBITDA, if it was three times, if the value was three times EBITDA, if I work back, that's 100000 of EBITDA. Um, like that, or you'd be getting $100,000, like to have a $900,000 uh, value, um, uh, then that would assume uh, an EBITDA of 
you know, if I, if I take, take that amount and, and say that it's uh, capitalized at a rate of, uh, a rate, uh, rate of three, um, I was thinking that's how you figure out how much the company be making after expense. You just work back uh, from, from the valuation that you're saying, right? Yeah, as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that was a quick calculation we did and it was an estimation. So we assume we just took three times the EBITDA being having that estimation as you aren't positive that that will be your revenue in the future either way. Yeah. Um, and then, so we went off of that. However, if you were to use $100,000, you would still be in debt and our recommendation would still stay the same as we believe that this is the best approach. So what are the chances of the employees being able to borrow all that money to buy you out to? Is that, uh, is that an issue or throw up, uh, are you assuming the employees that can sell to employees so they pay for out over time? Is that what you were looking at or a cash sale? Uh, I can take that. So we were we are operating under the assumption that your employees will be able to acquire bank loans and with the repayment plan that they will be able to uh, pay you back and that is the way that they would uh, take on the company. And that's all the questions all the time we have. So thank you.